Okay, this talk is on functions in R. So the topics we'll be covering are functions, recursive functions, anonymous functions, local and global variables, and scoping of variables, local, lexical, and dynamic, and finally closure. Okay, so let's get started. So in R, uh, the most important thing is are objects and functions. And as John Chambers said, to understand computations in R, Two slogans are helpful. Everything that exists is an object. Everything that happens is a function call. So we're going to look at functions in this class. And John Chambers was the author of the S language, which was the precursor to the R language. Let's look at a simple example of function. So here is a function from here to here. It's a function with an argument x and it's a variable greet, which is assigned a string hello, is assigned to greet then cat we say greet followed by x and this is a function this is assigned to a variable called hello and the variable hello is an object which is a f which to which a f function is assigned so then when you say hello and make a function call syntax with the argument mosh as a string it goes into the function call the function with x equal to mosh and then uh, greet is hello and x is mosh so it says hello mosh and you can see in r studio r say type of hello is a closure and class of hello is a function and greet it says object not found why because greet is inside the function it's not defined outside the function so let's look at user defined functions in r the function has a has a keyword function then the arguments and the body so for example and then we assign it to here to demo and there's arg12 and triple dot means other other arguments and then your statements and the last statement is a return value you can say return and object and then you can call it like this demo123 it's a function call and you can also load functions from a script file r script file by saying source demo.r if this was saved in demo that's pretty straightforward. So, first of all, remember that functions are environments or scopes. And R follows the lexical scoping, unlike, unlike the original list where the variables are find on the, found on the stack. In lexical scoping, the variables are the way they are arranged in the source code. So, we'll look at examples to clarify this thing. And dynamic scoping was based on the stack. And second thing is variables are always by pass by value. It's hard to pass by reference. So this is a big difference between other languages. And global variables are discouraged. And R has separate namespaces for functions and non-functions. So you can have an object name C and a function name C. We'll see examples of this as we go along. So functions in R are first class objects. What does first class object mean? They can be treated like any other R object. They can be passed as arguments to other functions. They can be nested. So you can define a function inside a a function and the return value of a function is the last expression in the function body to be evaluated and sec other thing that R does is lazy it uses lazy evaluation so arguments only evaluated when needed so th that saves a lot of computation and you can write infinite computation also uh, that look infinite but they're not actually infinite and they stop when there's no more need to calculate anything else for example in this example there's a function with a b two arguments and b is not used it's just returning a square f so you say f of x and x by uh, 2 and x by 0 so x by 0 is not used so it's not evaluated it just prints 2 raised to 2 which is 4 so that's lazy evaluation for example in this case x is not even used in the function it is returning 10 and you call it with x equal to a function call stop this is an error so this function is not even called because x is not needed it just prints 10 and let's look at anonymous or nameless functions anonymous functions are there in, in J javascript python and many new languages so r also has them and it's a basically a function defined at the time it's called now for example let's look at example function x and then the return value is x into 10 and from here to here is a function and 
it has no name and is called immediately with a value of phi. So x becomes 5, phi into 10 is 50. Here's an, another example, x into x into 10. But in this case, we give it a sign to variable called name. Then you can use name 6 and it turns 60. That's an example of anonymous function. Now, this unwitting r, r has is called default arguments. So you can give a y a value equal to 2. So if y has no value, you just say 2. f is a function which takes x and y and it does x raised to y and y defaults to 2. What does that mean? If you say f3, so it's actually f3 into 2, uh, 3 raised to 2, which is 9. It does 9. And if you give it an argument of y equal to 3, then it does 2 raised to 3, which is 8. And then there's something called wrappers. What are wrappers? Wrappers are one function calling another function uh, with some extra processing. In this case, we have a function called myplot. It does plotting. It take whatever argument you give it, it calls plot with the arguments. Except that the first argument is a pause. You say if pause, you wait for one second, system dot sleep for one second, then you plot the triple dot. So you don't have to actually know all the arguments of a function to wrap a function. So triple dot means whatever remaining arguments. So okay, so that's about the general thing. Now let's look at local variables. Local variable is passed by value, first of all. So for example, let's look at an example x equal to 5 we assign it's in a global space so and x is not used by f so and then f has another variable called x and x is uh, this x is different from this x and x this x is a local variable then we do x equal to x plus 1 assign x plus 1 to x and then you print x in this case this local variable x is modified the global does not change so when you call f1 it prints x 1 plus 1 it prints 2 then we print x again this x is 5 still so x has not changed for example in this case exercise you can try out this function j which is which looks you uses a function exists the variable a if a doesn't exist a equal to 1 otherwise a equal to a plus 1 and then you print a so when you call it twice what does happen j j equal equal to 2 what do you expect the output to be so what happens is from the comment we can see a is always created fresh. It is created inside the environment and, and lost when the function returns. So j is 1 always. 1 equal to 1. It should be true. So, so you can see that is true. Let's try another function. What does this print? x equal to 5. Then you print x equal to x plus 1. f1 prints. Uh, 1 comes here. 1 plus 1 is 2. Then you assign 3. At this point, this 1 goes here and it should print 1 plus 1, 2. Then you assign x equal to 3. Then you call fx. At this point, x is 3. So it should print 4. Then you assign x equal to 10 and print. So what happens in the last case? x equal to 10. So it prints 11 because x is equal to 10 and it's not a global x, it's a local x. And because input uh, 10 plus n and the global x is 3 because x was 3 last time we assigned in a global environment was 3. So the main point to remember is there's a gl global variable x from here 5, 3 and 3 at this point and inside f whatever happens is a local variable and it's lost when you return from the function. Let's look at global variables. So global variables are assigned using the double uh, less than less than minus sign and you can say greet allow in this case we have a function which prints cat cat is a equivalent of print it says cat greet x and we call it mosh x equal to mosh it prints greet is allow and x so let's see another example of a global variable so in this case x equal to 5 is a global variable in this case, we are using x without actually passing anything. So the global variable will be red, but the local variable x will be modified. So this is pretty strange. So when you call f, f comes here, x is not x is 5, 5 plus 1, 6, print 6. Then you look at what's the value of x, it is this value of x, 5. So what happened inside is lost. So let's see how to modify a global variable from a function. It's not recommended, but there is syntax to do it. 
you x equal to 5 then if you do less than less than minus assigned to x x for assigning the global assignment so what happens is this x is the global x so when you call f f comes here x is 5 then the global x is modified becomes 6 then you come here print 6 then you call f again at this point the global x is 6 so it print 6 it adds 1 7 then x is 7 okay so let's look at another example and in this case we can use the uh, hack to to actually change the we can change the global variable using the assign function assign x is actually a string look in a simple table of the of the environment we say environment is a global dot global in env so it will look in the global environment the string x in the in the table of variables and add 1 to it so x is at this point this x 5 plus 1 6 and, and x becomes global x case assign 6 and then you print the 6 so fx print 6 and then global is changed to 6 okay we'll continue in the second lecture